Hi, it's your old buddy here again, Hamish from the Guitar Factory School. How are you going? I'd like to talk about the dominant pentatonic scale. I think this is a ripper of a scale. Um, it's not used too much, and uh, I think a lot of rock guys and uh, blues guys would get a lot out of it, um, not to mention jazz guys too, who aren't familiar with it. It's basically like an arpeggio only with five notes, and what it does do, it beautifully outlines uh, an A9 sort of sound. any sort of unaltered dominant chord, um, static dominant chord. So the thinking is it goes, well I'll do this in A, so it's going to go 1, 2, I'm talking intervals here, 3, 5, flat 7, 1. So you get the idea it's going 1, 3, 5, so it's got that major triad in there, 1, 3, 5, flat 7, so it's outlining a dominant chord, but it's got the 2, and if you know that the 2 is the same as the ninth, that's a good sort of sound. So um, I'm going to upload some positions here, okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole tedium of outlining each one, but I'll just run through this one. So in A, it's um, second finger on fret 5, pinky fret 7, first finger fret 4, pinky fret 7, second finger fret 5, fourth finger fret 7, first finger fret 4 on the G string, third finger on the um, fret 6, then I'm doing a switch of Rooney here, I'm going up to the B string with my first finger, so we got then pinky on the um, fret 8, first finger on fret 5 again, third finger on fret 3. Now what I'm trying to do here is just think about that kind of old, familiar, comforting two note per string pentatonic shape that everyone knows. What I'm trying to do here is enforce that kind of two note per string pattern over that kind of sound. So hopefully in that kind of way you'll get to become just as familiar playing a, a dominant pentatonic scale as you would say a minor pentatonic scale. And um, like I was saying before there's different positions so that's a A, here it is again, here it is again and and last one is up here somewhere so Rather than me explaining them in this lesson, what I'm suggesting is download the printout showing all these shapes, and I'm calling them pattern 1, pattern 2, pattern 3, pattern 4, pattern 5, going up the neck there, just as you would a, a normal A minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so putting this into practice, um, I'll just give you a bit of a demo that's just a groove over an A7. So that was me just goofing around the sound of a, of a dominant pentatonic scale over a standard A7 vamp. The dominant pentatonic scale really comes into its own, I think, when you're trying to outline chord changes. And typically, you know, if you're playing an A7, and it's a blues or a rock thing, or sometimes a jazz thing, you go to the four chord. So that's A7 to D7 or D9, that kind of sound. So a good trick is to practice playing running up and down an A dominant pentatonic scale over the A7 to a D dominant pentatonic scale over the D7. So you're getting chord specific here and that's really outlining the chord shapes and it, if you know the sound of that to that you 
can actually hear it being embedded into your single note playing, which is really the essence of a lot of uh, jazz improvisation with your outline and the chord changes more than just going. Which is great, that's a lot of fun too, but this sort of thing, it's getting you more. So you're hearing more of the sounds of the, the course coming through, that's what I'm getting at. So um, a really good practice thing, it's a bit of a bit of a head thing too, I guess, but it's worth it, is to go through each of the different positions of the A dominant pentatonic scale, I'll say that I'm calling that pattern one, starting on the root note. Then you want to do a transition to the D7, so you transpose it. And the name of the game here is to think in one area. So you want to find out where the note D is locate the D for the root note and sure enough it's right there and you then hang the shape of that one there so that would be thinking um, say if I play the whole available note choice over the D7 that would be fret 5, fret 8, fret 5, fret 7 I'm talking two notes per string D string now fret 4, fret 7, fret um, G string now, fret 5, fret 7, uh, B string, fret 5, fret 7, fret 5 on the top E string, fret 8. So. You can hear that sort of sound of the that's resolved back to the A7 again. So it's a good exercise to do, but then you go up to the next pattern, the A uh, dominant pentatonic scale, and you sure enough go to, to the D, which is located there, the D dominant pentatonic. Then you go up to the next one, A, D again, here's A again up here. I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but uh, here we go. So, give you a better idea. So, I'm starting fret 12, and again, I'm not explaining too clearly what these patterns are. Just download the, um, the positions. You'll see this one here that I'm starting on B position 1, 2, 3. This is position 4, pattern 4. Okay, that's A, and then we go to the D. Bending into the notes and doing all that kind of stuff too, which is, you know, brings it to life a bit more perhaps, makes makes it more fun to play, so it doesn't feel like you're just running up and down a scale, uh, which is effectively what we're just doing at the moment. We're not re really even talking about making music so much here, it's just getting used to the visual parameters of these patterns. Uh, last one, which should start on fret, this would be uh, pattern number 5 here with the A. So we're way up here in fret 15, fret 17, fret 14, fret 16 fret 14, fret 17 again. So, it's a lot of fun just getting used to these patterns and it's, you get a kick out of hearing the, the chord shift from that to that in terms of the scales, the single notes up as opposed to actually literally having a chord behind you. It's a good thing to do because um, if you're playing with a, just a bass player and a drummer and you haven't got that safety net there of having another chordal instrument like another guitar or a keyboard player, you're actually generating the harmony, the chords while you're playing. It's, it's good fun to do.